Billy, I got to make a comment about the gun. First off, I got to say, Bill, you're going to give Ed Wallace a run for his money on that uh, description of the. I don't uh, know about that. I just I know I know a lot of shit. Maybe not as much as Ed Wallace, but, but uh, that, that was pretty good because guy. I had a case with shell casings, and when it, when a bullet is extracted from the gun, you you're right. There's the the hit on the firing pin is very very uh, distinct from the from the firearm, and also the striations that. When it ejects, it, it it makes certain marks on the shell casing that are identifiable to the gun. But here's something else about the gun. Very, very important. He's going to claim in a statement that he wrestled this gun away from Matthew and uh, he wound up uh, shooting Matthew and accidentally killing Ms. Soto. But they're going to examine the gun. Uh, would they find Matthew's DNA on that gun? Because the gun, if it's an automatic, it's got a, a clip. There might be DNA in there. And we know from the photos that were posted on the internet that he liked to, you know, uh, pose with his guns and touch his guns. So if Matthew's uh, DNA is not found anywhere on that gun, that's going to really, really put a damper on his uh, statement, self-defense, that he met, wrestled the gun away from Matthew. So finding the gun, Billy, I think you said it earlier, this is like the cherry on the top of the cake. It's a it's a neat package. Listen, we know juries can come up with some crazy, uh, you know, uh, uh, decisions at the end of a trial. But with this case, I don't think you could have anything more than what we have. We have the murder weapon. We have the motive. We have video evidence. We have a lot of different things. We have the, the statement from the father. We have the statement from the perpetrator. So I think that the prosecutor is probably delighted to uh, proceed with this case and to prosecute it. Uh, maybe there's more evidence that we don't even know about, but that gun being found very, very, very important to this case. Erica Olson, uh, wait, someone just, I was, I saw someone ask, I, I clicked on the wrong one. Oh, here we go. Anastasia, Anastasia 715. How often is DNA found on guns though? I'll tell you, Anastasia, there was a, a case in New York City where a police officer, Russell Timoshenko, and his yep. partner pulled over yep. a car, right? The car had very dark tinted windows. I don't even believe they got to the car and they started blasting from inside the car. Russell Timoshenko was killed on the scene. Uh, his partner exchanged fire. The perps all took off out of the car and they started running. Inside the car, and, and I'm not sure exactly how many, but there was numerous guns and there was chicken bones inside the car. They had been eating Kentucky fried chicken on the trigger guard of one of the guns that killed officer Russell Timoshenko. They found the DNA of the perp that fired the gun. Amazing work on the chicken. They identified the DNA of another perp that was eating the chicken. So they were able to identify the shooters without a physical identity, without someone seeing an eyewitness identity through their DNA as be so it happened. And that case is pretty old, Billy. That case is not that yeah. current. That case is probably about eight or 10 years ago, I believe, maybe even more. So the DNA technology has really, really come forward a lot since then. And like you said, Billy, that was a Brooklyn South case. I remember that very clearly. And uh, the DNA being found on the trigger garden. How big is a trigger? It's uh, not that big for, to pull DNA off of it, but they were able to, they were able to get com uh, convictions on that case. Absolutely. Um, Nadi Gabri, the lieutenant said they had the murder weapon, yet no forensic tests have yet been completed. Well, they're not they're not in a rush. They'll do it. Right. They're gonna they'll get it done. You know, they're pretty sure it's and and when it comes back to that spent shell casing, that's uh that's gonna be a huge uh, a huge um win for the police department, a huge win for the good guys. They'll have the evidence. The other thing about the gun that we didn't mention was the gun's got a history. The gun's there got a serial go. number, right? So if they can prove that uh, Matthew Guerra never had that gun, but somehow it's, say, related to Ramon Preciado or Matthew, or they can prove that they had that gun, how is it that Matthew came to the scene with your gun? You know, how is that possible? So, again, another very – and I'm not saying they're going to be able to prove that, but there's a possibility they may be able – the history of that gun, which they always do – through alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, they run the history of that gun. Where was that gun? Is it a stolen gun? Is it a defaced gun? Uh, where where was that gun? Who last owned that gun legally? Now, Matthew, um, excuse me, uh, Christopher Preciado, I, apparently didn't have a criminal history. Could he have bought that gun legally? Yeah, he could have, right? So he may... 
it may be regi registered. I would say I'd say the chances of it being registered are, are pretty slim. But there are still ways that you can prove that that gun belonged to him. Phil. Absolutely, Billy. Listen, he could have traveled out of state and purchased that gun uh, legally or with some kind of identification. So the uh, the track of that gun is going to be very important, Billy. Uh, if they can narrow it down that it came from Christopher or well and good or, uh, you know, where it came from, if it was stolen, perhaps they could tie him to that. But I don't think uh, they're going to be able to tie it to Matthew. It seems clear to me that this gun was in the hands of Christopher and uh, it was his gun, even though he's going to come up with that self-serving statement that it was self-defense and he wrestled the gun away. Um, whether or not they're able to do that, perhaps the serial numbers are, you know, uh, uh, taken off the gun to a point where it's not traceable. Uh, I think we still have uh, a very, very strong case against Christopher in, in this uh, situation. You know, all of the, uh, all of the innuendos, all of the, this is what we think happened. This was a hit. He, this uh, Matthew owed Christopher money. We, we don't, that's never been reported uh, by the police.